Perhaps I'll elaborate more on that later. For now, we've uh, completed the Ice Grotto, and I'm now heading to the Glacier. Within the Ice Grotto's chapel, you discovered a secret hallway, complete with a teleporter that has wrenched you to a fortress on the eastern edge of the island. The air seems warmer here, but you're sure the reception from the locals will be no less chilly. The secret level of this episode. Lost almost half of my armor there, jeez. Those fire gargoyles just rip it away. There's another one. There's another one. As much as I don't think Doom on its own is all is all that good, I I think the opposite about the modding community. I think the modding community for Doom and for this game as well and Hexen too, they're really good communities that always churn out. Well, for the most part, they churn out some really cool stuff that is definitely at least worth a try. Although it may kind of throw some people off occasionally, that's kind of an inherent thing about modding. It's something different. It's gonna throw people off. There really isn't much that can be done to fix that error. And it's one that I, at least, can ignore fairly easily. Hence why I, uh... And hell, not everyone has the same taste. There are some mods that people are going to absolutely adore, and some that people are going to just hate. And really wonder who made them and why people play them at the beginning with. And that's okay! Typically there's more than one mod for a game, and if you don't like the mod, or if you just don't like mods in general, just remove them from the game! Unless you're playing a compatibility mod, well there are the compatibility mods really are just so that games like this can run on different systems. So they typically don't affect gameplay much at all, aside from maybe upping the graphics a little bit. But if you're playing with a gameplay mod or a conversion mod that you really don't like, just remove it from the game. I mean, it's not like you're taking out the engine of the game itself. It'll still run perfectly fine without... Darn it. Without the mod. Or at least it should, unless it's a very badly constructed mod. Or very badly constructed game. Or if it's a virus. People have sometimes uh, made mods for the purpose of viral distribution. But that doesn't happen very often. Most of the time, they just enhance one's gaming experience. At least for a good number of games like this, they enhance mine. Ah! For <sighs> okay, I may sound like a bit of a hypocrite by saying that. And the fact that I'm not... <sighs> Go away! Thank you. And the fact that I'm not playing with any mods. But that's just because I, uh, they're either mods that I didn't get, or they're just ones that I just well, dropped. Like War of the She, since it removed the Tomes of Power, I eventually, um, after playing a few mods with, or playing the games a few times without these mods, I kinda, the Tomes of Power kinda grew on me, and since War of the She removed those, I eventually kinda dropped that mod. But like I said, you can do that. You can drop a mod. And 
Okay, here's a nasty little trap. Ah! We're dragging two gargoyles at once. <clears throat> Definitely not fun. And it's even less fun finding a giant hallway filled with were dragons. Wah! Whoa! Ooh. Ah! I get caught on crap while attempting to dodge their stuff. Engage at range? That's fine. I can do that. Okay, I definitely want to use that. The freaking mace points. But yeah, like I said, that's one of the joys about modding. You can pick up a mod, it alters the gameplay, mess around for it for a little while, maybe get hooked into it if you really like the concepts or the new things it brings in. Some mods come with that sort of cost too, like removing something else from the game. In War of the She's case, it also nerfed the Dragon Claw, which is definitely not something I appreciate. But if you think, if you think the costs outweigh the gains, at least for your gameplay style, you can just toss out that mod and try a different one, or just go back to playing the normal game. And then maybe you'll get hungry to put in another mod. <laughs> Oh yeah, like that War of the Shimon, for example. I will show you how it works. As much as I, uh, it, the cost didn't outweigh the gains for me personally, there are definitely, I'm gonna play through some wads with that in the future. And I'll show you a bit of how it works. I especially like how it adds in those sorts of little dialogue sections before the secret levels. I actually had an interesting case once where this knight followed me up the stairs to where those gas pods were and blew them up, hurting itself, and then it killed itself. <laughs> That's uh, apparently a glitch that plagues these Doom Engine games where um, if a monster blows up a barrel and another monster is harmed by the explosion, that monster will turn on another, and apparently it works where if a monster blows up a barrel and damages itself, if its anger isn't turned to something else already, it'll start trying to kill itself. You'll say, it's kind of stupid. Oh, that's a really nice touch I didn't mention before. But when you pick up a weapon, you can actually... that The sound it makes is Corvus laughing. 
a sort of maniacal laugh of, <laughs> this baby is sure to kill something. <sighs> That's one thing I really hate about the tornadoes. They tend to get, if you get them caught on something and they won't pursue you, if they haven't hit you at least once, they'll stick around for a, a real long time. You can even say they overstay their welcome. <laughs> Ooh, nice. Yeah, did you hear that? That noise I made when I picked up that other hell stuff? That was Corvus laughing. In a very maniacal way. Okay, now this room can be nasty because it's filled with disciples. That, ow. Ow. Now that stuff's hard to dodge at this range. Ah, oh, yeah, the fire mace runs off of those um, silver spheres. A great big pile of them. So the glacier cleaned up. It's quite bad stuff, unfortunately. But hey, I never said this was going to be a perfect run. After all, there are plenty of secrets in this game that I don't know about. Oh yeah, one of the uh, ambient noises that sometimes happens in this game is the is one that's kind of similar to the, uh, the screech that an iron witch makes when it spots you. Okay, nope. Shiny key. Oh, oh dear. Get out of here. You will not stop shooting, will you? Not until I deprive you of your choice to do so.
we'll definitely want to be a bit careful in the uh, yellow key zone because the big precipice over a big pit of smoldering rock that's going to be difficult to get out of. Ugh, ah. <laughs> well, that's one way of Sparta kick, I guess. Oh dear me. Okay, yeah, that's the other reason you have to be careful. There's a firing squad of were dragons right there. this trap. Good thing there's nothing that shoots in this one. left of my enchanted shield there, but it probably wasn't going to last anyway. Ah, getting hit in the back by that shrapnel. Ow. There's actually a, um, a modding community out there called Realm 667, I think, that makes a lot of monsters, primarily for Doom, but also for um, Heretic and Hexen. serves me well. Yep. Just getting rid of that guy. I'll get back to that little secret business in a second. But yeah, Realm 667 made a lot of uh, monsters for uh, Doom and Heretic. I think they may still be doing it now, I'm not entirely certain. I think their focus may have been more to creating um, their own special wads and stuff. But, um... <clears throat> Among their creations are, uh... Various new forms of imp, including the mutant imp, also known as the double imp, um, the vulgar, and the helion, and an imp warrior as well, which has a shield. And I think they also made several different variants of uh, Hell Baron from Doom as well, calling the Bruiser Demon, um, the Archon. and the fury. And they also made uh, a 
couple of bosses for Doom as well, including the Terminator and the Moloch. Um, as well as, the, um, what reminded me of this was the Iron Lich that I killed a while ago. But what, um, one of their creations, one of those boss level creations, is a black Iron Lich that flies, called a Sentinel. Oh crap, crap. Oh yeah, they also made a creature called a Bormoreth. It's basically a monster, a two-headed monster god that's very similar to a basic enemy from Hexen in terms of design. And hell, in the, uh, the special Hexen playthrough I'm planning in the future, with a cameo from two of my buddies... We may actually end up encountering some of those uh, Bormoreth creatures. Gargoyles in this room. I'm expecting saber claws, but no matter. No real change. I knew you were back here, though. Yeah, I don't really need to restock. I can do that just fine in the next room. Now, unfortunately, my recorder can't record for uh, an hour and a half without stopping, so I'm actually going to end this session here. So. Where we continue off next, we will leave the catacombs and continue on our escape trip from Hell's Mall. I'll see you all then. All then.